How is it going, everyone? Who is with me already? Thanks, everyone, for joining. Hey, example, nice to see you. How's your day so far? You were also here yesterday, right? So my plan for today is to pick off or to pick up where we left off yesterday. Pop Alexandru, hey. How's it going? Nice to see you guys. Look, I've set up something new on the screen here. Now we can see the latest subscriber and the latest follower. I think that's pretty cool. Bio Luxio Pinnick, hey, nice to see you. Nice to see all the regulars. So last night, okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Zoyek, to you too. Last night, I made sure that I uh, slept well because yesterday was difficult. And it was made more difficult because I didn't have enough sleep. I hope that now with eight hours of sleep, <laughs> we will be able to uh, fix this test or at least get some uh, steps forward because that's difficult. It's quite difficult to uh, test coroutines, but I'm not the only one thinking like this. But we can learn it step by step slowly, right? Okay, he's suggesting, uh, suggesting to use flow instead. Yeah, I'm considering switching to flow but i still didn't just want to ignore the problem but we found the solution eventually yeah i, I just don't like to um, try to sweep a, plop, a problem under the rug by just ignoring it and switching to something else. Sometimes that's the only way. As per the docs, don't use single top. It doesn't actually do anything for this case and you shouldn't always use the default and you should always use the default launch mode. Are we still using single top? Yeah, but not in the manifest, only here. Okay. First of all, Mike Lancello, hey, nice to see you. How's it going? And then uh, Gabo would probably find this interesting. So our deep links did not work with launch mode single top in the manifest, right? And Ian Lake, who works at Google, said that we should not use single top. Don't use single top. And you should always use the default launch mode. I think there's nothing to say about this. Uh, we have to remove this, uh, the launch mode anyway. On the other hand, if but what if you don't want to allow the same activity on the stack? multiple times. Nice to see so many people today. I was almost afraid that the difficult and a bit boring session yesterday would scare off some people <laughs> because yesterday was not very productive or 
maybe that's the wrong way to put it, right? As long as we uh, learn something, it is productive. But let's say it wasn't as much fun as the ones before. I think for the topic of testing coroutines, I have to take it a step or I have to take it a bit more slowly and try to uh, learn it properly from a tutorial or from the beginning. Because the other stuff we have done so far in this tutorial, I pretty much knew most of it already. That's not the case for testing coroutines. That's still a relatively new topic for me. I like all these little features that you can set up with, uh, with Twitch, like latest, like, like showing the latest follow on the screen and stuff like that. There's even, there's much more. Some people even have little games on the screen. Let's see if I should use a different color for the light. No, not this one. I think the, the one we had before is fine. Yeah, when I want to read through this article here and get some ideas on how to test our countdown timer. So we changed our countdown timer yesterday to be fully based on coroutines by simply running delays in, a, in an infinite loop, basically, until we get to the end. We have a lot of pr uh, printLNs in here. Those are just log statements, but we will remove them later. Yeah, the curtain based timer is working in my opinion, but I needed a while to figure out how to do it because you can't just use a delay, right? Delay is eventually inexact. Let me remove the log statements for now so you can see it better. We can't just use a delay and then call on tick because this will eventually be inexact. So I always compared it with the starting time and the target time and this way it should be pretty exact. Counter timer should not be inexact, I think. It's it's slightly inexact, but it doesn't add up over time. If you build a curtine counter timer the wrong way, it will add up to minutes eventually. Delay itself is completely inexact. If you put the app in the background, it sometimes gets triggered much later, I think. Yeah, now it's a coroutine counter timer and it seemed to work. Hmm. But I already wrote something similar for my other app that I built. This just 10 minutes the app had also a coroutine timer. I still use delay to, uh, to wait the countdown interval, at least roundabout. But then I don't use the countdown interval anymore anywhere. So you can see the countdown interval is just used in the delay, but I don't use it to calculate a new time. And I also remove the callbacks and replace them for yeah, channels. But testing this was difficult. Um, because I think yeah, what happened? I think I didn't get I didn't get an event. I didn't get an on-tick event as I was planning. And I wasn't even sure what exactly I should be testing. If I should test this counter interval 1000 milliseconds on-tick called, or if I should let the whole timer run and then count how many on-ticks we got, I'm not really sure how to structure this test. But I think here the problem was that we did not get an on-tick event sent for some reason, even though we end up at the correct place in the loop. But RS4 yesterday sent me this article here, which I probably should work through to get a better idea.
But if I see it correctly, this condo timer should also be inexact, right? He uses a bit of a different approach, not infinite while loop here. He uses this range. Elapse time. Where is elapse time coming from? Uh, from this range. He's using a range. Yeah, look, it reads for 60 seconds and there's nothing coming out, even though I used log statements to check and we actually end up in, in here. We're just not getting the event, I think. But I'm trying to understand his approach for the timer. So he's using a range. Elapse time. Then he delays, delay interval, he does steps in the delay interval. But in my opinion, this should also be inexact because the delay, the delay itself is not exact. I think uh, give me a second. Yeah, that's the problem we also had to solve. Take into account users on tick taking time to execute. Last tick duration. I guess that's the same, a similar way to uh, get the same result. I don't know, I just know that when you put the app in the background, I think, and lock the screen, then to, the delay will be completely off. But also, yeah, we also have to take into account how long on tick takes, but I did this in my code. I do a take on tick into account. Wait here, it's not a callback anymore. So we don't even have to take anything into account, I think, because it's a flow, right? I mean, no, a send can suspend. Wait, what happens if send suspends? Should this channel maybe have a, should this channel have a, a buffer so that we can put events in there? Otherwise the timer should be stuck, right? Do you think the Callback was more reliable. But we can test this better than callback, can't we? Because now we can use turbine. Or should we uh, or should we use a callback? I mean it can probably also be tested with a callback, right? Maybe we should base it on a callback. What would happen if this is suspense while the timer is running? Then the timer would would be stuck, wouldn't it? Or it would it would not emit any more any more tick events. But I guess if no one is watching or listening for these events, then it doesn't matter anyway. Then the timer doesn't need to keep running. I would definitely not use a channel here. Hmm. Now then, then let's uh, turn it back to a f uh, to a callback. If you think so. I mean, I can just write it from scratch again. Less of how's it going? Okay. Uh, on tick.
I can give this a name, right? Then I think we can get rid of our value class, actually. I think we can actually get rid of our value class for millis until finished, because I only used it for the flow. I think we don't need it anymore. Because we used it for the flow. Observe timer events. Start timer. Does anyone know what I gain if I give this variable here a name in the lambda or in the function argument? Is this for auto suggestion here or, or do I get a hint? Yeah, I get a hint. Okay. Makes sense. Hey, Marcus, nice to see you again. Were you able to solve your fragment adapter problem? Okay, let's move this back in there. Although maybe, Gabo, you can tell a little bit more on about why you would not use a channel here. Although I did not really like it, actually. For some reason, I liked uh, the callback more. So that you don't need to care about suspension, okay. I just thought when it's based on coroutines, then it would be cool to also have it have the callback based on flow but i guess that's not the right way to think about this and by the way i really like these trailing commas i pretty much i use them almost always they're really useful if you just want to copy paste an, uh, an argument i send a little drawing how i've going yeah i take a look at it later single adaptive retragment even though they differ by just okay if they are uh, if they differ, then it might be necessary to create completely different adapters. Yeah, they are really nice. When I wrote some Firebase code with Node, um, with TypeScript, then they actually enforced this by the compiler. I could actually not compile my code without adding a trailing lambda to the last argument, even though that seems a bit overly strict. Okay, now it's based on callbacks again. And I guess this also gets rid of our problem here. Maybe not. So what would we do in our test here? Would we, would we count these ontic events? Or how would this work? So I thought it might make sense to test if after one second we get exactly one tick. If we pass this even though this value here is arbitrary, right? So I don't even know if this makes sense to test for this specific value. Maybe uh, maybe I should write correct numbers of untick called or something like that. Or untick, yeah, counter interval 1000, untick called at 1000. Oh, this was my throat. Um, yeah, so I guess I guess I have to, uh, but yeah, I think I have to take a look at the article first. Uh, okay, okay, we can get rid of this stuff here, right? On tick and on finish. First of all, do we take the execution time of on tick into account? In my opinion, yes, because we uh, compare the start time and the target time. In the next round, we check if the current time is smaller than the target time, so this will still be exact. We delay for the countdown interval again, and then I uh, subtract not the countdown interval from the millis until finished, I subtract the target time, or I subtract the 
elapsed current time from the target time. So this should always be exact in my opinion. I mean, I actually want to test this. Give me a second. Comment this out for now. I want to I want to test this. I want to block the thread in here. And see. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this makes sense for testing it, but I want to see if the time would be off if I block the thread. I mean, blocking the thread is the easiest way to uh, imitate a long running task, right? I mean, it wouldn't even have to be that big. But I guess, I guess blocking the thread is the easiest way to check if the time will be off, if the execution time takes too long. Even though let's make it a bit smaller, we actually don't need five seconds. Then we will get an A and R, won't we? And why is the timer stopping? What did I, no, I think I clicked twice. Okay, look, we are skipping seconds, but the time seems to be still exact, right? So we are skipping time, but I think the time is still correct. I mean, we probably have to uh, compare it. Okay, this one will be a little bit later. So in my opinion, this should work because now we are, now we pretend that we have long running, very long running work in OnTick. Yeah, it stays exact, right? Because we always compare the target time and the starting time. And we don't just use the, the duration of the delay. Yeah, looks fine to me. I want to make sure that this is correct or exact. Oh, and Gabo, you didn't see the other change that we did last time. We created a time source. Um, maybe we have to revert this. We created a time source that lets us control the time like this because we didn't get the test based on coroutines to work with the timing. So cre we created this time source. Do you think we should remove this and try to use advanced time by? But I think it didn't work properly. Or I know it didn't work properly. We didn't get it to work. And I think this timer here will also be inexact. He's waiting for he's waiting for interval in millis, and then he's using this as the step. But even if this is like one second, then it could actually end up delaying longer than that. So I think this timer is not exact. Yeah, it was kind of a hack, but we are. Uh... No, wait, but we did need. No, but the other problem was that we can't use system clock dot elapsed real time in tests. We actually could not use that. So what should, what should we use instead? Yeah, I think we cannot use. I 
System Clock elapsed real time. Okay, different capitalization. Hmm. Yeah. Not mocked. I think this link here is dead, by the way. Yeah. Or blocked. I don't know. He suggests just lowering the time duration. Valid scenarios for each duration interval. Okay, he suggests just using very small values. But isn't one second still pretty long for a unit test? Timer start returns if he returns a flow. The flow are the tick events, I guess. I guess the flow are the tick events, and then the last one is the unfinished event, basically. Do you like this approach more than the one we have? I mean, here emits values from a flow. And those are his tick events, basically. And then in his test, he turns that flow into a list. Expected. Start timer. To list. But he's not skipping time here, right? He's just using small time values. Start timer emits correct tick. Count. I think I need a test scope if I want to control time. He's just using very small values, but we still slow down our unit test this way, right? So I don't know if that's a good solution. But since our one is based on callbacks, we need to we need to block this in some way. Or maybe we don't. I 
I don't know if it if it should be nine or ten. I think it should be only nine, or maybe ten. The the unfinished also emits a tick. I think. No, it doesn't. I think it should be nine. But was zero. So there is a problem with the asynchronicity, is isn't isn't there? Start timer. Yeah, start timer starts, but we pass the. We pass our test scope to the count on timer. So the coroutine in the timer and start timer will use our test scope. But why is there a problem with the with the threading if we are using the same scope? We should run through this whole thing, right? And we should get our on tick events. Shouldn't we? No, not here. Because we, are not, we don't have live data here. Here we have a test scope. But why are we not getting these events here? We should execute this whole loop, right? And all the on-ticks in there. Hey, boy1240, nice to see you again. How's it going, man? Really nice badge you have there. Test scope. But we run the test in the test scope and we also run our whole timer in the test scope. Shouldn't they be therefore in the same on the same thread? Or do I understand this wrong? Run test. Um, run test is the run test is the one that that skips the delays. So I guess actually uh, the interval time here shouldn't matter, should it? Because we are skipping delays anyway. So we could also set this to uh, ten seconds and one second, basically, because. We, uh, we are skipping intervals any uh, the delays anyway, right? So it shouldn't matter how long they are. From my understanding. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand why we are not getting all on tech events. We should go through this loop until we complete it, right? This should ex actually be executed. Wait, but here we have our fake time source. Here we have our fake time source that we are not actually incrementing. This is what we forgot. How do we pretend that the time increments? How do we re how do we pretend that each round the time increments? I should probably not do this in here, should I? Advanced time by. I should probably not do this in here. No, it still, it still doesn't work. Advanced time by. But we need a way to advance our time in the fake time source. I have an idea. Is it always so difficult to test time-based stuff? I mean, I should probably also finish looking at this guy's article. Or we should base our whole counter timer on a flow like he did. And then apparently we can just turn that flow into a list and see how many events we got. What do you think about his approach? Look here, just emits each tick as a flow with the flow builder block. Advanced time by. Right, but we need something that our loop is, is getting the current time from. 
And if it's the fact time is lost, then we have to increment this as well. I think I sh should just rewrite my counter timer the way he did. Then I can follow his article. Yeah, but I just tried this. I don't really know where to do this because we have to do this in each iteration. With advanced time by, do you mean the one from the coroutine scope or the one I created from in the fake time source? But we are still not getting an event. The fake time source just has a has this as a field and advanced time by just adds to it. So the next time in our loop when we read from this value, we're not advancing the curtain time. Hmm. But it didn't change anything either, advanced time by one second. Shouldn't, I mean, we also, but we are not passing the dispatcher, are we? So do we have to even have to advance the time manually if we are not passing the dispatcher? Oh, you're right. Now we are getting a value. <laughs> but why do we need this additional millisecond? But if we don't pass the dispatcher, do we even have to advance? Look, now we. Now I didn't even advance the time in my own timer source. I thought advanced time by is only necessary if you actually pass the. Pass the dispatcher. But we are not using real time. We are using our fake time value, which is not actually time. So I don't get why we would need advanced time by. Yeah, but we are not using real time. We are using fake time. No, the timer isn't using real time either. It's using the timer source. And the timer source in our test is our fake time source, which is just a long property. It's not using anything other time related in here. Okay, delay. No, but, but run test skips delays by default. Run test skips delays, doesn't it? But by default, by default, delays should be skipped. That's the point of run test. Runs will skip delays. This allows to use delay in without causing the test to take more time than necessary. Run test skips delays. I'm pretty sure they mean that they don't wait for the time that's in the delay. It's the same as run blocking test, which did the same.
Mm, I don't get it. Delays occur, but the test did not block. No, but the point of run test is to skip delays. Not to... Uh, I haven't used advanced time by another test either where I had delays. But why do we need this extra millisecond? Now we are in an infinite loop, apparently. Why are we in an infinite loop? I guess because we are not advancing the... Oh, thank you very much, Noah's 101. Hey, how's it going? Um, I play I'm not advancing the fake time. Yeah, that's what I was about to say as well. We are stuck because we keep this at one second, right? Yeah, very nice, Noah's 101. I hope I can return the favor soon. You just have to be online at around 5 p.m. Here in Germany. Oh, nice. Thanks, guys. Alien Pohetan, thank you for following. Ah, Nova Siri. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Not one R1. Okay. If you are online around 5 p.m., then I can return the favor. Technically, you should repeat 10 advanced time. Okay, so Gabo, you're saying that we need advanced time, but I'm still trying to understand why. I thought when we use run test, which is basically, or which is the new version of run, run blocking test, you know how in a run blocking test, I thought this would just skip all delays and finish the loop immediately skipping delay but it does not do them okay it only executes if time passes yeah and my stream is so reliant on you i would not progress here i think without your help at least not in the testing stuff yeah lead talk but if it was lead lead uh this the ray of writing, it should be a 4 instead of an A, right? And a 2 instead of an R. Time passes when you call advanced time by on the scope. Okay, then let's try to get this to work. And do we have an assertion inside the repeat loop? Or how does this work? Repeat. 10 how do you call this argument oh i guess we we don't need this anyway and why do we need this extra millisecond would you put the assertion in here okay then we need i actually or count is it count maybe like this? Use 5 instead of S and then assert for I plus 1. Use 5. What do you mean with 5 instead of S? Yeah, I mean we will see when we run the test. Uh, 
But we have to run this in the test scope, right? So that I, I don't even know why. Lead speak, yeah. This has been around forever. I remember like 2002 or something like that. I was already in, in internet forums and this was already popular. Okay, is our test here still stuck or what is going on? It's still hanging. Oh yeah, last Kaya zero. Hey, thanks for joining. Thanks for the compliment. Um, now for now, there are no other courses planned because creating courses is really painful. I would much rather build some stuff for now, at least. Maybe I will turn the stuff I learned here into a course eventually. Okay, I can't even click the stop button. Let's just try to run it again. Stop it. Maybe something from the previous one was because I can't even stop it. Look, Nova Ziri, if you're still around uh, in Android Studio, we can show Pokemons in the progress bar. Or oh, I guess the the what's the what's it called? It's called Pokemon and not Pokemons, probably. Go to university. Yes, I did, but I studied business economics and not computer science. Unfortunately, I started learning to code at 27, or one month before turning 27. Let's see if it works now. Oshabot. Yeah, I finished. Wait, are you my mom? Because my mom is always, she thought I, uh, I did not actually finish it. She doesn't believe me. <laughs> Maybe that's a trick question. Okay, we are still in the loop. Wait, did we lose our changes? This is the one up here. Okay. Did I start the wrong one? Oh, I started the wrong one. Mm, no idea. You can start using it right now. Is my PC so loud? And most companies probably will. Oh, my PC is on fire. When I use coroutines, my PC starts screaming. Somehow, be on the computer. Whoa, it is. I have a very good PC, actually. It's really new. But the stream is really lucky. Maybe this one test at the bottom that I actually that I accidentally started, maybe this one is the reason. Okay, let's try this again. I mean, companies will probably start adapting it now, unless they are, I mean, they did the same as they did for Kotlin, they make it interoperable with the old stuff. 
So you can start using mix, you can start mixing compose and fragments. Gabo is a fan of putting composables inside fragments. So let's try not touching the one here at the bottom. Let's try starting this one and hope that it works. And that my PC doesn't crash. Because I actually had the blue screen before. Expected zero, but, but was one. Okay, count plus one, right? Count plus one. So it was the other one, uh, the other uh, test that was stuck. Okay, assert to the top. Or count plus one, right? Now it's in the now it's loop again. But why? something of the, with the way we advance the time, I guess. I wonder if I should just rebuild my whole timer the way he did. Because he can just turn his whole flow block into a list and then he can count on the list how many uh, emits he got. How many times the flow emitted. What do you think about this approach? Is, wouldn't it be better to use this for my countdown? No, we totally care, Mr. Quirrell. And I read this stuff. I'm gonna build a pretty complex movie database app using the things I learned from the course. Yeah, sounds nice. I'm totally interest, uh, interested in reading this. But again, I can't stop this process. What more can I do than clicking this stop button? Do I have to restart Android Studio every time? Yo, Lane COD, how's it going? Blame the fake time source. Yeah, it must be this, I think. I just have to catch up with the chat here. Lane COD, thank you very much for following. Does not get old. Okay. I really like when the chat is more active, but now when when someone has to uh, write the message that I have to see, then uh, tag me with my name, because then it's highlighted on my screen. Just one question, Gabor. Would you, uh, how would you like it if I rewrite my countdown timer to be based on this approach here with the flow block? Because for the test, he, can, he doesn't have callbacks and he doesn't need this awkward counting. He can just turn this whole flow into a list, right? And then he uh, gets all the events at once, if I understand this correctly. I don't even know what, what exactly happens when you, tow a when you turn a flow into a list. list is uh, it's a suspending function though no but I'm talking about his exact approach here with the flow builder block Not with any uh, property. I 
I mean, we can also keep the callback, I guess. Just have to fix the test. Last K0, thank you for following. I mean, you can try. Because then I can just follow his tutorial step by step. Just then that we don't get a separate finish event, I guess. stuck what if we uh, swap them it's better than this loop we don't understand <laughs> yeah I think I will try to rewrite my timer this way because it seems like a good idea. I have no idea what this would do. I thought debugging coroutines is impossible. Target time. Well, my PC man. The Android Studio is really making my computer lag. Oops. Terminated. Somehow we are stuck with our time. Yeah, they seem not to be lightweight. I also noticed that my... Also, when I just run the counter timer on the phone, you can actually hear my PC getting louder when I run a protein based timer. Yeah, breaks. Yeah, I usually take a break around every 90 minutes. Yeah, for 10 minutes. Yeah, but I only take a break for 10 minutes because I don't want to make the, the breaks here too long on the stream. It's funny that it actually makes my stream lag and this is a new PC. It's really, uh, it's pretty good. Curtains don't work. You know, I will, I will try to implement his approach here. See how this works. So, uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, to make this exact, I will need the system time again. Or is there a way to get the time? What are the other ways to get the, the time that has passed without the elapsed real time? Is there something like that? Should I maybe measure the time? Measure the time? Should I use measure time to make it exact? Is there maybe a way to get rid of the of the system clock altogether? 
by using measure time instead. Because I will need the system time in here as well in order to make this exact. I don't think this timer here is exact. Or is it? No. Core activities, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, time is not even, I mean, there is this thing called time, uh, uh, I forgot the name, where time actually passes faster if you travel at a very high speed. So I guess we could make our test break by uh, putting our PC into a rocket and flying around the Earth. I think the test would actually break then because time flows differently then. Well, I guess it would still work because the whole PC would be affected. Testing time is tricky. Yeah, I noticed that. Maybe we can get rid of the... I mean, we have something called measure time millis, right? Maybe we can use that instead to... to make our timer exact. Or is there something else we can use? Get elapsed time. Measure time millis. Maybe we should use measure time millis in, in, uh, to make the timer exact. Or oh, is using system current time millis. Okay, then it won't work because I think this will change when we change the time of the device. So this will not work. If we change the time and the settings, then this will change as well. So we can't use measure time millis, I think. It's based on time of day clock. Yeah. Measure nano time. It's based on a monotonic clock. What is a monotonic clock? Does it mean it does not take system time into account? But I assume if it starts... Okay, they also use the system clock in the countdown timer. In the countdown timer, they are also using the system clock.
maybe we are already on the right track. We just have to figure out why this does not count correctly. Advanced time by one second. I feel like we should make this approach here work. If the countdown timer is also using the system clock elapsed time, then we should probably use that as well. Sleepy Dev01, thank you for following. Yeah, I think you should make this here work. Because in his timer here, in my opinion, he is ignoring. Or I think his timer is inexact as well. But the test he wrote is a good hint. The expected amount of ticks, basically. But he's using run blocking. Okay, that's why he doesn't skip the, the delays. Yeah, no one will take that bet. We are all Gabo Varadi fans here. Okay, here, here we are talking about run blocking test. Core activities, thank you for following. It seems like my, this whole follower stuff is working, but now I'm wondering why is it not showing your name? At the latest follower it seems like there's something uh, the it's probably too small set up so the name doesn't fit in i'm not sure i'm sorry about that mr extremely uh, we are trying to uh, write a test that's based on time which is difficult advanced time by So Gabo, you're saying that this is not actually a... Skip delays. But didn't they say in the code lab that's... Testing curtain timing. Run. skipping any calls to delay so how do i have to understand this skipping any calls to 
to delay, which for me would mean it doesn't execute delay, it just ignores it. I don't understand why we have to call advanced time by. It's definitely saying that it skips calls to delay. It's skipping them, it doesn't execute them. In my opinion, we should not be it should not be necessary to call advanced time by. It skips calls to delay. by passing the dispatcher, right? This is how I understand it. If you want control over the time, you have to pass the dispatcher. And I test this patch. Uh, KT extension are uh, Kotlin <coughs> Kotlin files. No, I can't read anything out here. Where do I have to put the breakpoint? So it's adding plus one to the target time. It's adding plus one to the target time, which is wrong. We get in here. Target time. Looks like we are, I mean, I don't even see a value for the time source time. We are just stuck with target time 11. We are not increasing the time source time. Start timer. Start timer.
We are stuck with our one second, apparently. We are not increasing the, the time source time. I think we are not even getting here, otherwise we are... Or, may, or maybe we do get here because it, it failed earlier, right? So I guess we do get here, but then we are stuck with the same fake time source time, I guess. It's not increasing, that's the only... Yeah, we only got there once and then we are stuck in here. Because we are not increasing the fake source time, apparently. I guess. A real bug. Do you mean in our code or in theirs? What happens again if I remove this? Run the time itself on a different test code in dispatcher. No idea. I think so. We can't pass a dispatcher. Advanced time by has a different meaning. It does not run the tasks scheduled at current time plus n. So what exactly uh, has a different scope here, or what do you mean? But it's deprecated. That's Curtin's testing 1.6. Yeah. I think just trying out stuff will not lead us anywhere. I think I have to read this whole I have to read this whole thing, I think. Robin Five, thanks for following. I think we have to use the old testing library methods for now and then replace it afterwards. Otherwise, it's too difficult to basically learn both at once. I am Heather, thank you for following. Uh, 
Und die andere Hand. Do I run in parallel? I still think we don't need advanced time by. Bini, thank you for following. Wait, I still haven't used my best weapon so far. Which is asking the cut and length slack channel. Maybe this question is too general. How can I this kind of time based on credits? What can you use as the time source? Because I can't use system clock dot elapsed real time in a test. Let me phrase it a bit differently. Oops. How would you test this countdown timer based on coroutines? What can I use as the time source because I can't use system clock time is needed because 
delay is not exact. Well, let's hope someone answers. How do I increment the time? I can create a fake time source that uses a long field, but I can't, uh, don't know how to increment it in my test. I still think we shouldn't be using advanced time by. It should just skip the delays. We shouldn't be using advanced time by. We are not getting anything. But we will get there eventually. Don't know why it's not starting the debugger. I have no idea. It's a bit annoying that we are stuck with such a small problem for so long. That doesn't feel right. What if I made this timer a loop? I loop for, I loop with a step of interval or millis until future. Wait, I'm gonna show you. If you type in exclamation mark recap, there you can see it. We are uh, writing tests currently, but it's difficult. 
because those are tests based on time and coroutines and we can't get them to work. What if I make the test a loop, a simple loop? Run current. Yeah, I read that too, but I, I wasn't sure what to make of that. No, it's still looping. It hasn't changed anything. It doesn't change anything. No, it doesn't it doesn't change anything. It's the same exact same as before. Release a future counter interval. I will now rewrite the timer the way he did. But I try to uh, get rid of the imprecision. Because this timer is basically just a loop and not an, I mean, a finite loop and not an infinite loop. Where is elapsed real time coming from? Okay, that's, yeah, I get it. That's the value. Let's rename it as well. Because the difference in his approach is that he has a finite loop. We have an infinite loop. So we need to progress our time some way to get out of the loop. Whereas here, we shouldn't need to do that. I think. You know, we have an infinite loop. So we have to increment our time source to some sometime get out of that. But he's using a finite loop where we shouldn't have to mess around with any time source. Hey, Aris4, how is it going? We are still stuck with the same problem, but I'm trying to rewrite the timer in a different way. The only problem with this timer is that it's it will not be exact in my opinion. Because delay is inexact. Delay can, as far as I know, take any time at once, basically. Yeah, and the emission as well, but also just delay is inexact. That's the problem. 
that's why I end up at the same problem. We need some form of real time, either the system clock's time or something we fake as a point of reference to know when we have to leave it. If we do it like him, our test will work, I think, because we can just run the loop immediately. We don't have to wait for anything. We don't have to skip the time. But we need this point of reference, which he doesn't have here, in my opinion. I think his timer will not be exact, because he's missing this point of reference time, which is our time source. So I would have to change up his timer to uh, again take this point of reference into account. Stop. No, I think this is why. No, no, we can't use system current time release because this changes with the with the clock of the device. So yeah, I feel like this article here is too simplified. He wrote a simple countdown timer and he wrote a test for it. But this won't be exact without taking the system time into account. This doesn't take the system time into account. Controlling the virtual time. Do we have to call run current before the rest and not after it? Yeah, before we use the Android countdown timer. It's, uh, Wait, I, I think I accidentally removed the break here. We need a break, right, to get out of the of the loop. Maybe this is why our test was stuck in the loop, because I forgot the break. I'm not sure. Right now, we uh, without the break, we don't we ever we never leave the while true loop, right? Right. Wait, is this working now? Uh, please don't tell me that the whole that this all was caused because I did not break from the loop. No, no, it's but was one. War. I want to see if it's working for the last one. Um, how can I? How can I do that easily? Well, if this was really a uh, cost because I didn't uh, break the loop, then that's just crazy. 
then this is just crazy. But do we need to run current? That's the question. Do we need to run current or not? The Gradle build is still running. Why is this run current important? No patronos via we use our own time source. That's not one from I don't know Kotlin or where it's coming from. Okay, it seems like the grand current has to be here at the top. But we are just combining stuff until it works. It's really it's so weird. current. Mm, I have no idea. I don't think so. I don't even remember our approach from yesterday. No, I think I had to break in there originally. I just removed it when we turned it into a channels, I think. But originally it was in there. Otherwise our real timer would have never stopped. We also need this run current for some reason, but I have no idea why. I have absolutely no idea why. Take count. Yeah. I guess that's when I removed the break. I think before that I had it in. I'm not sure. Run test. Advanced time by. Should this be nine or eight? I have no idea. Don't tell me it's not working again. Why? Why would it stop working now just because I removed the loop? Man, I have no idea how this curtains library works. Why does it stop working now? And why is it stuck with Gretel build running? Doesn't make any sense. 
This does not make any sense at all. Inject the time source. The problem is I don't even know why does this work, but then it stops working if I remove the loop. That's what does not make sense to me. Then it's stuck in an infinite loop again. This does not make sense to me. Why would we get stuck here? Oh, maybe it does make sense. Maybe it gets stuck because we don't increase the time sufficiently. Okay. This does make sense to me. What about the run current? Is it necessary? No, run current isn't necessary. So at least we are getting closer. Run current does not seem to be necessary. Yeah, I know what it I just don't understand what this is what this is telling me. That's the problem. This... Hmm. I definitely have to tell Gabo that we forgot the the break here. This was why we were stuck in the in the loop. At least we are getting results now. I'm just wondering why we need this advanced time by. What happens if we don't use it? Then we get zero. At least we are not stuck anymore. Wait, no. How is that still nine? Okay, because of And now I don't get it at all anymore because now I completely removed the fake time source advanced time by. So how? How the hell is this working now? How the hell is this working now if we if we don't increase the the time of the time source? How can this be so difficult to understand? I don't get it. Start time, target time. The problem is we don't see a value for the elapsed time here. I don't see a value for our fake time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, I had it in there originally. I must have removed it sometime, somewhere. But we don't need run current. And for some reason, we don't even have to increase the system, uh, the fake time. I don't know why. But at least this explains why we were stuck in the loop, yeah. So is this leaving the loop or not? It is. Now what is this? Yeah, that's the cancellation, I guess. But what I don't understand is, look, I even removed the... I removed the fake time source, advanced time, and the test still works. Why? How is it leaving the loop if we never increase the, the fake time? How is this leaving the loop? Okay. The fake timer does not advance, but the timer itself does. Right. Yeah, but this should always be zero. So we should always end up in the if block. We should always be below the target time, right? I'm not ready for another approach. Where is the first place? We are not advancing the system time. How can this still work? This does not make any goddamn sense to me. This is the worst thing I had to write ever. How does this make any sense? Yeah, still working on the timer tests. Advanced time. 25. Then we will have 25 ticks. Then we get 25 ticks. But how the hell are we leaving this loop? I don't get it. We never increase this value. It should always stay zero. We should always be stuck in this loop. By calling more on ticks. Or is it just canceling the whole curatine? Does this just cancel after 25 seconds and we, we never reach on finish? I mean, we can try locking it. Is it maybe just cancelling the rest of the curatine? Maybe. It's never calling on finish. What happens if I... But I don't know where to write this. Oh, right. We never get to unfinish. Yeah. Because we are beyond the duration already. But what happens afterwards? Does it, does it, why is it not infinitely running? Does it cancel the curatine or how do we get out there? Are we cancelling the curatine or what is happening? Because we should be blocking.
steps through it. Now we are stuck in the loop again. This does not make any sense to me at all. No sense whatsoever. I just don't get it. Why this would now loop and not before that? I need a proper tutorial on Curtin's testing library. I need a real tutorial on that. If you advance the fake timer, then you get stuck. Apparently, but afterwards, apparently, because look, it's it's stuck when the real time is 10. So after this whole thing run for 10 times already. Duration minutes is the duration of the timer. I think I need a proper tutorial on Curtin's testing because this is really not leading anywhere. We are just mixing code and hope that some combination works. I think I have to continue with the code labs and try to use them. Now the timer ran correctly. It looks like it. After changing the order of advanced time by, and this one here. I've changed the order of them now, now it works, but again, those are just blind attempts. If I change the order, we get all events. So this order here works, advanced time by, Increase the time source. So this seems to work as a test. Okay, here we never get on finish. So the test is working now, but just by combining stuff, uh, different forms. I guess the test is working now. I just want to have it fail at the last one. How can I do that? Um, if count is equal to nine, else assert that, and then I want to use a wrong value here. So I just use zero. But was 10. So the test is actually working now, but we, I just threw different stuff around and the problem is I don't really understand how, but I guess the test is working now, but the order is important. Why does the advanced time by have to happen before we advance the time of the fake timer? It has to happen before that. System time elapses after the environment system time elapses. What's environment system time? Uh, 
And why is my forehead transparent? Better. Before reading property. Yeah, I actually tried that out yesterday, but some other thing was not set up yet because then back then it didn't work. I actually tried, yeah, I remember that. And I tried it out and it did something. And then I asked if you are still in the chat, but I think you were already gone. So yeah, you were right yesterday that we have to call advance time by first, if that's what you mean. Just trying to understand why. Elapse time from time source. I still don't get why we have to call advance time by first. I don't understand why. What is happening in this loop that we have to call advance time by first? Why do we have to call that at all? You read the time source before you enter the while loop. Okay, yeah, I guess that's the reason. But then, but then what happens? Advanced time by, then it gets stuck. Then it gets stuck in an infinite loop. Advanced time by. Advanced time by. I still don't get why the order is important. I still don't get why the order is important. Cut. We increase the system time by one. We get in the loop. We execute the delay and then we call advanced time by. I don't get why this would play a role. You say we should call run current here. You're right. Run current fixes this. But why? Why? Oh my god. This is breaking my brain. What the hell does run current do that? This works now. But this looks cleaner than having to add this extra one millisecond. Okay, first of all, I will take a break now because it has been over two hours. And then I will try to understand, we have to understand what is happening here. I can't leave this test without understanding it. So after that, I will run through the debugger and try to uh, understand why it's working in this exact constellation here. Okay, see you in 10 minutes.
Okay, what's with all the foods? <laughs> Food talk here going on. Yeah, it does sound delicious. I have to wait for a long time today before I can eat. Because after the stream, I have to go to the doctor immediately. And then I have to go to the gym. And only then I will eat. Okay, now I would like to understand how exactly this is working. Gets the current virtual time. Runs the tasks that are scheduled at this point of virtual time. I just If there was an, a nice way to visualize this, it would be very useful, but there isn't. Uh, thank you for writing this. But where would the quarantine advanced time by come, in, come into play? I just don't understand why they have to be called in this order. That's the, <clears throat> that's the problem. Don't understand why they have to be called in this exact order. And what run current does. And why can I not see the start time here? Why does it not print the start time on the screen? No, I don't mean start time, I mean, I mean timer source. Can I print this here? Why does it not show this by default? No, but Okay. I guess we need advanced time by to skip this delay. I don't know. What happens if we remove this? Exception.
it's only working in this exact constellation, but I, I really don't understand why. And stepping through it with the debugger doesn't help because it doesn't tell me anything about this method call here. Maybe I will understand this later and just have to ignore it for now. I don't know, but I don't don't really get it. You just have to be happy that it works for now. <laughs> Maybe I will understand this later. I have no idea. advanced time. Maybe we need advanced time to uh, get over this delay, I don't know. Yeah, advanced time belongs to the curtain scope. This is one for the curtain scope and this is our own one. And the question is why they have to, why they need this specific order. Yeah, we need it. Without it, it doesn't work. And not only do we need it, we also need it in this very specific order, which is what I don't understand. But at least the test is working. At least the test is working now and I guess we can <laughs> delete this one. I mean the test is working. Um, I want to try out a few things. I mean the problem is I don't understand what is going on here but at least the test is working. Maybe it, maybe it isn't though, because I was expecting this to fail differently. Yeah, we already tried debugging it, but didn't lead us anywhere, because we don't know anything about this curtain scope time when we use the debugger. Current turns time by. I tried debugging it, but yeah, you saw that we are, that this didn't lead us anywhere. Conan interval two seconds. Yeah, the problem is that the debugger doesn't give me any insights on the curtain internal curtain scope timing. 
but I need this to understand what's going on. But if it's just showing me that the value here is incrementing, then I don't really, uh, then I'm not really winning, uh, not really winning anything from that. So let me try to break the test at least. Untick. Kanan interval. Untick. It should break if I increase this value here. Then I would expect this to uh, not give me the correct number of ticks anymore. I guess. But now it's zero again. Okay, yeah, this makes sense, I guess. Let me uh, decrease this. I guess this is how I would expect the test to break, by this being not exact anymore. Yeah, that's working. That seems to work. Yeah, we. Uh, I read through this article. It's this one here. Um, no, this is not the solution. He, is, he has written a very simple timer that's just based on delay, which makes the test easier. But this one will not be correct. He doesn't have the starting point as point of reference, but he needs that. And this is what causing us all the trouble, basically. If we could write our timer like this, then we wouldn't even need to me mess around with the system time. Because then we could just count the steps, basically, what he is doing. He's turning this into a list and he counts the steps. But this is not enough. You need a, you need a real time as point of reference. Otherwise, this will be inexact. And this is what is causing us all the problems. But now it's working and also the... The test is breaking in ways that I would expect. So if I mess around with this interval, yeah, with this delay time, then the on tick count doesn't fit anymore. But I still think this test could be flakier. Because I don't know what happens if on tick takes too long, for example. What happens if on tick takes 3 milliseconds extra? Will the test break again? Okay, I can't use. Will the test break if I let the thread sleep for a few milliseconds? No, it's still working then. Not sure why, but it's it, it shouldn't be bad. So to summarize this, the No, but I'm not looking for large values. I'm looking for small values only. If it now breaks, it's a different story. But it seems to still work. And even then it, it passes. No, on the other hand, I think it makes sense because we have full control over the system time, right? So I guess something like th thread.sleep or execution time doesn't change anything about the system time, right? Because we have full control over it. So the test is actually working now and it's working well. I just don't fully understand why. But it is working now. Even if we put a th thread.sleep in there, it's still working properly. And it's also breaking in ways that I would expect. So if I mess around with this, 
then the tick count is off. What do you mean that you realized later? We don't rely on IRL time. I mean, at least the test is working. Advanced time bar. What would I expect now to happen? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, now we get two ticks instead of one. I, I guess that makes sense, right? We are getting two ticks in our loop here. I guess we could fix this by add, changing this to a 2500 as well. Or maybe not. It's still off then. Yeah, because of the loop, I guess. Because of count plus one. Yeah, it's not count plus one anymore, right? I guess it's count times 2.5 plus one. I'm not sure. No. Oh, yes. It's just, just have to turn into an int. No, this doesn't work. Um, tick count to float, maybe like this. Double. Uh, no. I just wish I would better understand what exactly is happening here instead of just writing this down, but I know too little about the Curtin's testing library to understand why it's working this way. I understand too little about this library to understand this. But maybe later. Maybe I can pick up on that later. What else should I test? Unfinish. Test fun start timer. On finish called once maybe.
can I now just do advanced time by 10 run current does this test make sense not sure It's not working. It left real time zero and we don't get to unfinish here. But the structure for me looks the same as, as what we've written up here, just without the loop. No. Advanced time by. Advanced time by. Maybe it only works if we do it in a loop. I guess it only works in a loop. Otherwise, we probably don't update the, the system time. I guess we have to loop this always. like this. But we... We get into if block with zero two times. That's also not. That's also weird. Why we have zero two times in this. In this if block here. We have elapsed real time two times in there. Advanced time by. We have zero two times in there. Advanced time by. I also don't know why this one here doesn't finish. I was expecting this test here to uh, finish like the one above, but this one never gets to unfinish. This one never gets to unfinish. Why does the one up here, which is pretty much the same, get to unfinish, but the what the one down there doesn't? This one gets to unfinish. The one down there does not get to unfinish. But we're doing the same things. We are doing the same things there. Same duration, same tick interval, same loop, advanced time by is the same. Why does one of them finish and the other doesn't? Okay, this one finishes as if I remove the assert. Why? What has the assert to do with that? 
Maybe it does finish in both cases. Finish card. What does the assert have to do with that? Why does it not call unfinish if I add an assert? Why do I have to run 11? Or do I have to add another run current here? Why do we not get to unfinish? That's what I don't understand. I guess we can try debugging it again. We have, we also get the zero two times. No, no idea. Why would this not get to unfinish? Why would it get to unfinish if we remove the assert? I don't understand it. Unfinish, no unfinish. No unfinish. Maybe it does get to unfinish. None of this works. Danshu87, thank you for following. None of this here works. And Leonix TV, thank you for following as well. Okay, advance until idle fixes it. And I don't know why. No tasks remaining. I guess we need advance until idle here, but I don't know why. Don't know why. But we need advance until idle to get to unfinish, I guess. What if I duplicate this? Then the test should break. And what if I uh, count this in each... It, uh, Execute this in each iteration here. Yeah, that's what we are building and we are implementing tests right now. So the test is working again. Advance until idle was the answer here. It's just that we are just that we are just putting stuff into our code and hope it works. That's what bothers me about this. But this test is now also working as expected. It avoids that I add unfinish in the correct and uh, the wrong place. So this test is now also working. Advance until idle.
Well, at least the tests are working. I guess that's a success. But why does this not work with, it, with another second? Hmm. We need advance until idle, I don't know why. Like this. Indeed. But why? Can you explain why why it works like this? What's the rent current for? I don't get it. And but I guess um, advance until idle is probably the correct thing to use here, right? To run the scheduled curtain. But what does this mean? Run the scheduled curtain. All this is running in a in our curtain. That's the same thing, but it would advance until well idle. But the thing is, um, to run the scheduled curtain, the sentence doesn't really say anything to me because all of this is running in our curtain. And this whole loop is running in the curtain as well. But at least it works now, so that's a good thing. The test is working. Luckily, this class is relatively small. I just would really prefer to understand why, but I have the hope that I understand it in the future just by using this a bit more. Yeah, so I think this article here is not a solution because his timer will not be exact, in my opinion. Is there anything else we could test here? We take, we, I mean, yeah, the correct duration, right? We could um, test that it has the correct duration. Pun start timer. on TikTok. If on TikTok, do you mean the countdown interval or do you mean the execution time of on tick? Or what do you mean exactly? On tick took 1100 milliseconds. The execution time of ONTIC. But we already tried that, right? And it didn't. I tried it with thread or sleep and nothing changed. Start timer. Duration. Uh, 10 seconds, I guess. Well, correct duration. Start timer. Correct duration, maybe. It's test scope dot run test. So you say I should put a delay in here, or what do you mean? Okay, we can't call delay in here. 
into Kabik. To be in. But we are not hard coding a delay anywhere. Do we? But why? Then I would need to make it a suspending function, but we don't need that in our actual real code. Start timer correct duration. Or maybe a 10. Duration. 10 seconds calls on finish after 10 seconds, maybe like this. Maybe just launch using test scope. You mean inside or on tick? But what does this change? It, it would just run in a separate coroutine, right? I don't think, I don't see what <clears throat> this would change about the test. Cards on finish after 10 seconds. Countdown timer, start timer. And finish card once. If I launch a curtain inside on tick, then I don't think anything will happen there, will they? It will just launch a separate curtain, if I understand this correctly. Duration 10 seconds, cuts on finish after 10 seconds. But I guess we are already testing it here. CM Griffin, thank you for following. Oh, and thank you for the rate. I think that's the second one today already. Really nice. Thank you very much. I will note down your channel and check it out later. Griffin. Yeah, I note down your name. We are currently writing tests for our Android app, but this is difficult as hell. Yeah, sounds good. But I guess we already implicitly uh, test this up here, that after 10 seconds we get. Oh, nice, so you already know him. I guess this test is a bit pointless because we already test this here. Maybe I should test that there is no unfinished card prematurely. No. Duration 10 seconds and 9 seconds passed. No unfinished card. No unfinished card. No unfinish card before. Duration reached. We want this to be zero. And I think I have to remove that once until idle, don't I? Hmm. 
how to test yeah the the infinite loop is causing my stream to lag no, but i don't know how to test this because we don't get out we don't get out of the loop this way so i don't know how to test this how could I test that unfinish is not not called prematurely? Assert that maybe like this. Finish count. Start time into launch block. What do you mean? But what for? Maybe this is the correct way to test this. No unfinished cult before duration reached. We call no unfinished while we are in the first 10 loops. So let's see if with 11 this would break. Oh, nice. This is what I expected. So the first 10 rounds, the first 10 rounds should not call unfinish. But I guess that's the same that we already test here. We already tested here by not putting Start timer on finish card. I guess it's it's pretty similar to the test up here. No on finish card before duration reached. I mean we are already implicitly. Uh, I guess we can keep both tests. Unfinished card. Yeah, this way we just make sure that we don't call unfinished prematurely, I guess. That we unfinish. So I guess I could do something like this to break the test and not the other one. No, the other one would. Yeah, what if I remove this, would the other test break or not? I think the other test would not break because we are culling, yeah. Okay, that's what the second test is for. The other test that does not break because it only culls how often on finish is culled. Whereas the other test makes sure that it's culled at the correct time. Yeah. The other test makes sure that it's called at the correct time. I just wonder if we should combine them into the same test. I could just move this part here into the block as well. So this makes sure that unfinished is called exactly once in this whole cycle. And the other test makes sure that it's called at the correct time, which is at the end. Well, at least it makes sure that it's not called in our first cycles here, in the if in the if block cycles or before that. Because if I move this here, the first test will pass, but the second one breaks. Yeah, because it's called. No unfinished card because it's called too early. I just wonder if we have to keep both tests. Finish card ones. I guess we can keep both tests for now. And the good thing is our tests are working. And I'm partly getting the hang of it, but not of the advanced time stuff. 
Okay, what else could we test here? A tick called at the correct time. Emits correct tick count. Maybe I should rename this to uh, emits on tick every. Wait, start timer. Countdown interval 1000 emits on tick every 1000. That's what we are testing here, basically. And when we uh, change the delay here, this breaks. Start timer on finish called once. No unfinished cult before duration reached. I guess these, te these tests make sense. Are there any other tests we need in here? Cancel timer. But cancel timer, there's nothing really we can test here, can we? Or maybe... Fun cancel timer. Emits no... Well, I guess we can just write cancels timer. It's a, a great method name. Cancel timer cancels timer. So. Let's see how we could write this. I guess we want to count both ticks and unfinish. Oh. Start the timer. Or maybe I should. No. Then count on timer dot cancel timer. Then we do our usual loop. For the same time. Wait, I want to try something. Instead of doing this in the loop, could I do this? 10 and advance until idle. Would this work also? Yeah, it works, just not the correct value. And we get another one. Advance until idle. So that tick count is equal to zero. And the uh, unfinished count as well. That's what I want to see here, basically because we cancel it immediately. Seems to work. And if we remove this code here, it should break. Yeah. Just don't know why we get 11 and not 10. But 
but it doesn't seem to be a problem right now. And if I don't cancel the timer here, it should also break. The only thing is I don't know why we get 11 ticks and not 10. Maybe because we run the zero tries for whatever reason. Wait, we get... One tick. One, two, three. Why do we get 11 ticks and not 10? It should send the first tick after the first delay, which is the first second, basically. But for some reason, we get zero tries. We get zero tries for some reason. I'm not sure why. Because after the first round, the lapse real time should be a one second. Maybe we have to move run current here. Oh, this fixes it. Is Gabo still here? Gabo, I summon you. So we have to move run current actually below this. Otherwise we get one too many uh, ticks. I'm not 100% sure why. Yeah, we have to move it below. Because I guess otherwise it, it runs through the loop and then starts it again and only then it advances the time, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what is happening, but we have to make sure that we advance the time in both places and then, then can't run current. You mean my explanation? Hmm. So what happens if we are car run current too early? Does it finish the iteration in the loop and start the next one? Is this, is this how I can imagine it? I'm not really sure, but it makes sense to put it below. Then we get the correct values. And I think eventually I will, or we will understand what is going on here. But I have to play around with this a little bit. Into run current, or what do you mean? Test scheduler run current. Yeah, this code is complicated to understand. Hmm. For some reason, if we call run current too early, then we get this extra round through the loop. We get this one extra iteration through the while loop. Hmm. Because we increase the time of the curatine, but we don't increase the time of our of our time source. This is somehow the reason why it does another iteration. I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? Because we, uh, we, we don't increase the time source. Instead, we tell the curtain to uh, run whatever it has to run now. So I think it does this extra iteration because we tell it to just run. But we haven't increased uh, the one second in our time source yet. So it's still getting the zero here. It, I don't know if this makes sense, but this is how I understand it. The run current just runs the loop with the same zero value again, I guess. Hey, Ili Youth, how's it going? We, it feels good to actually get closer to this stuff. 
it feels good because at, uh, at least we are unstuck now and I start understanding what is going on here. But yeah, Gabo, what do you think about this idea that run current runs the loop again without increasing the elapsed real time of our time source? So this is why we have zero two times, I guess. This is how I understand it. Oh, Elliot, okay. Can I close this or do you still want to see something in here? You can tell me if I should open it again. Um, no, this should be Java code, right? I think that's still Java. No, this, this here is Java, right? No, it's Kotlin. Okay, I, I missed it. I was confused by the public keyword, but yeah, it's still Kotlin. Okay, so run current at the bottom. So this test here is also working. What if I change it like this? Then we don't get through the loop. So we have to loop and increment this each round. We need the loop for some reason. Otherwise the lapse time stays at zero because we never get out of the first iteration, I guess. You need to do it. But yeah, what does this mean exactly? What? Why do we need to do it in a loop then? Why can't we just skip 10 seconds? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, we are doing well now because we are getting closer to a understanding the stuff here. Testing is difficult with Kotlin. I'm just saying this for Elliot. If you said countdown interval one, duration 10, and then say advance time by 10, then you should be able to skip ahead. So, but this is what we did, right? This is what I did. This is exactly the setup I have here. We skip the whole duration. But here we end up with zero. Yeah, I guess that's a better way to put it than sure. So this here is always giving us zero in each iteration, even though we advance the time by 10 seconds. Not completely sure why. The other way around, it's a loop. And this way around, it's, it's zero. was oh wait wait no this is actually working as intended we do expect 10 here wait Wait, this is actually working. We do expect 10. But here I removed the cancel timer for testing purposes, right? So I think it's working actually. This should fail because we are not canceling the timer right now because I removed this. So it's actually working, I think. If I remove this, Yeah, it wouldn't change anything, but we would expect a 10.
happens and on tick does not. No, we were actually getting our 10 ticks. So it, it was working. The test failing was actually the result that should be there. Yeah, we are writing a timer from scratch. There is one, a countdown timer, but um, that doesn't make testing easier because then we don't have any control over the time. So we are using coroutines, which, which gives us a bit of control. But it's difficult to use. Hmm. Yeah, without Robo Electric. So I think this was actually working. So I could do this, for example, I remove the repeat, I set this to 10k, and then I have a single assert that expects 10 ticks. This also seems to work. Let's hope. Or maybe not. Expected 10, but was one. It has one on tick. I guess we are skipping the other ones. Yeah. We are skipping the other ticks, right? That's the reason. We are skipping 10 seconds, so we only have a single tick. So I guess this also makes sense. I'm just happy that the, that the tests at least work now. I'm happy that the tests work now. Oh, you were... Te oh, all right. All right. Then everything I just said was probably garbage. Mids one tick. So let's try it up here as well. <clears throat> Thanks for watching out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks for paying attention. I did not notice that. So let's see if this gives us 10 ticks. Or one. Expected zero, but was one. Wait, but I, I didn't type. I didn't type in one anywhere. Or zero. Oh, I, I executed the wrong method. Look, it's working. It gives us the correct number of ticks. Even though it says elapsed real time zero every time. I don't really know what, what's that about. But it's actually giving us the correct number of ticks here if we advance the time by 10 seconds and this time as well. I still don't completely understand it, but it's interesting. Why is this now? Wait, but this works without the run current. Why does this now work without the run current? Look, I was, I was even able to... Uh, okay, the run current uh, executes the rest, right? This was the whole point. The run current executes the rest. Yeah, finish. Breeze Lou, thank you for joining our chat here. It's just interesting to me that we get the correct kick, uh, tick count even if we uh, advance the time in one in one move. But interesting is that we get elapsed time zero every time we do this. So I guess we have zero compared to 10 seconds, zero compared to 10 seconds over and over again until 10 seconds are over and we leave the loop. This is how I understand it. We never get to unfinished though. Yeah. I just wonder why this approach here also works, but we never get to unfinish in this case, and we have elapsed real time zero all the time then. So I guess. I'm not 100% sure. But the tests seem to work as intended. That's a win. That sounds like a bug. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's just how the test executes the coroutine. Because we get the correct result at the end.
I mean, how can it be a, a bug if this is our connection to the lapsed real time? We set it here and we read it here and more is not happening. But the time is correct if we do it in a loop. Um, which one did I start? Unfinished cult before the revision reached. Okay, this should be nine, right? Or shouldn't it? Wait, how did I write this test before? No, this is the wrong one. Before duration reached. Did I have this as nine before? I think. No. How did I write this test? Does this belong here? But we are calling on finish now. But that's, that's correct, right? What about nine now again? Then we are not advancing the time, I guess. Then we are stuck in the loop. Hmm. As to Alberto, thank you very much for following. I guess this little text here, there in the bottom, there, I guess it's helping. With more, subs uh, with more followers at least. Because I got a lot of followers today. How did I write this test earlier? Start timer, no unfinished cult before the ration reached. Oh, I, I needed to advance until idle, didn't I? Didn't I? Salad Wurzel, thank you for following. Advance until idle. And I also like that people use the recap command. So it seems to be useful. Mm. I think we are getting the infinite loop because we don't get to 10 seconds. So we never reach the target time. I'm just wondering how I wrote this test earlier so that it actually worked. I mean, I could do an if check in here. If count. I could do a... What do you think about this? I could do if count is equal to 10. Is third that it's equal 1 and adds a third that it's equal to 0. What do you think about this? Does this make sense for a test? Well, if we don't actually increase the fake time, then we never leave the loop, right? Because it, it compares the fake time. 
that's how I understand it. It has to reach fake time of 10 seconds in order to leave the loop eventually. But we don't do that if we are stuck at 9. Hmm. Not sure at the moment how to read. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to uh, take another look at these tests tomorrow and try to uh, improve them. I have to leave in a half hour anyway. My plan is to uh, stream every day for now. Yeah. I mean, this does, uh, the last two streams were not that much fun. But as long as we learn something, it's useful. How come you have time? Yeah, I'm, I'm homeless. <laughs> That's why you can't see my, uh, my room behind my chair. There's, there is no room. I'm just recording in an empty space here. Okay, I think it's a good idea to take another look at these tests tomorrow. Hilt view model created every time. Does anyone know why my view model using Hilt view model created every time? What is created every time? The view model or the Hilt view model? Yes, I only have green screen. <laughs> Yeah, Kirillingos, what is created multiple times? New view, view model is created every time. Um, well, it should be, in what situation is the question, right? Because if you leave the screen and go back to it, it should be recreated, right? But not if you uh, rotate the device, for example. And I have to go to the doctor in half an hour because I have to get my finger checked here. As you can see, it's super crooked after I broke it. And I think the doctor has to uh, cut it open and correct the bone for me. And I need to get this checked today. This happens if you break your finger and you don't notice it. Or well, I notice it, but I thought it wasn't broken. So I just kept doing sports and everything with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that I enjoy this procedure, but I have to go through it because it's not working properly. It's just, it, it feels way too stiff and it hurts all the time. I can't really move it. And it has been three months already since it broke. So it should be fine by now, but it's, it's curved. It doesn't, it didn't heal properly. Anyway, so my idea is to take another look at these tests tomorrow. But I don't want to leave them in a in a broken state, at least. No unfinished cult before duration reached. Unfinished cult once. Maybe I should merge these two tests. before duration reached.
I guess equal to nine is the correct one, isn't it? Yeah, and then the last one, cards on finish. What do you think about this kind of setup for the test, Gabo? I have to do an it I have to do a check and assert in each iteration because eventually finish will be called. Eventually finish will be called. Or maybe I should keep the test more concise and say uh, if count is less than 10, then assert that there is no unfinished card because eventually there will be an unfinished card. Otherwise we are not leaving the loop if we don't cancel the timer. But I, also, I already check if unfinished is called up here. So I think this one should only check if there is no unfinished card. Is less than 10. Wait, what number do I have to pass here? Why is it less than nine? That's what I'm not sure. Okay. But yeah, I think we should not test that the unfinished is called because this is already what this test up here is for, right? It executes the loop, it runs. I start understanding this whole run current advance until I, I think, I'm not sure. But it feels like the clouds are opening up a little bit. And that's good. I was almost scared that we would uh, not get beyond this. But here we call, we check that unfinished is called once, and here we check that it's called before the ration reached. And I think the point of this second test is that we can't do this here. Cut out unfinished, put it here. In my opinion, the first test will still succeed or pass because it is called exactly once, just in a different place. But this test here should watch out that it's only called after we are actually finished. So this is how I would write this. So that we don't move it in the wrong place. Wow. Those were the hardest four tests I've ever written in my life. I'm just wondering how we should proceed next time. Um, the whole idea was to... Uh, so this is the, the, those are the tests for the counter timer. But we also want to write a test for the timer view model, which uses the counter timer. But I think we can use our knowledge here and we will probably have an easier time writing them. Gabor, stop hating on Navigation Compose here. I think you should start your own podcast, which is just called Why Navigation, Why Jetpack Navigation Compose Sucks. And then you can make an episode every week. Yeah, Gabor recommends to use fragments and put your composables in fragments. And I guess he's right. I don't say anything against that. But for our case here, it's still working without fragments. Controlling the virtual time. Okay. So I think... Mm, well, let's, let's see if there's another test that we can write. I mean, we have cancel timer start timer Gabo, are there any other tests you would write here? I mean, we already tested tick count and everything 
I don't want to start writing tests for the view model today. That's a bit too much because I only have 20 minutes left. But I also don't want to finish the, the stream prematurely. Uh, if there's maybe something we can still do. I guess I can go through some tabs that I have still opened. Advance the time 400 milliseconds at a time. I think this will give us four ticks, right? Because I already tried this with 10. This will actually give us four ticks. It should. But are we test are, are we really testing anything new with this? Because we already have this that we get a tick every year. It just feels like we are testing the testing framework instead of the functionality of the app, aren't we? If we do this. I don't care about. So start timer. Countdown interval. You mean the same kind of test or should it test something different? Do you mean like this? Or do you want to test something completely different? You mean just with a different interval? Okay. So the same test. Should I use 4K or something else? So. Hmm. Wait, is the test? Advanced time should be 4,000. But I, I set it to 4,000. And I guess we also don't expect 10 ticks this time. We expect 2 or 3. Counter interval should stay. But I'm also wondering why this test here doesn't pass in this form. Shouldn't we get a tick after four seconds? But was zero. Why is it not working like this? Ten seconds for interval. Let's see if this one up here is still working. Yeah, it's a good one because it's also not giving any log output in elapsed real time and so on that we had before. It's a good test because it broke. But it doesn't even, oh, look, I forgot to call run test on the test scope. I guess this is why it broke. It doesn't run in the same coroutine, I guess. So now it should be working. Hopefully, please. Um, okay. Yeah, but this is because we never get out of the loop. We never get to 10 seconds, I mean. We never get to 10 seconds, but we should if we uh, repeat it three times. But ex I guess we expect only two ticks and not three. So 
So we have to make sure that we actually advance the time of our fake time source all the way to um, where we are getting one, two, three. Okay, we are getting three ticks. Now this makes sense. We are getting three ticks just that the last tick happens, I think, after uh, from eight to ten after two seconds. I think I updated enough version. Now one or yeah, four seconds. Twelve. No, but I guess that this is fine because we jump in these steps here. I think it's working as intended. Oh, by the way, Gabo, uh, now that you mentioned single top, you weren't here before, but uh, Iron Lake told me to not use single top. Look, let's see here. Here. No. Where is it? There. As per the docs, don't use single top. It doesn't actually do anything for this case, and you shouldn't, and you should always use the default launch mode. So single top is officially deprecated. You heard it here first. LMAO. Okay, so I guess this test is working. And what was the other thing you wanted to test? There was one more test you wanted to do. How Android works. Richie NB, thank you for, uh, for joining our stream here today. With advanced time by four. In about time. But aren't we testing the, the testing framework then? Because then I have to uh, I have to write in the test name what kind of testing tool we are using. Because I have to what, what do I write in here? I write advanced advanced time by one thousand. Advanced time by 1000. I mean, how would you call this test? Okay, you mean just trying it. And we don't keep the test. And what is the counter interval? 1000. And do you mean both fake or should the fake time source have 1000 as the step? Is this the setup you want? Yeah, this is what happens then. Is there anything unexpected here? Okay. And maybe a repeat 10 instead of 3. Yeah, we are getting 4 instead of 1. Richie and B are here. How's it going? Thanks for following. So I guess this would be a count times 4 plus 1. Is that correct or am I wrong right now? No, apparently not. Or count plus one times four, maybe. No. But it's close. It's close at least. Yeah, count plus one times four, but 
I think it doesn't add up with the with the repeat. I guess repeat has to be three in this case again, because it doesn't fit more than three iterations. Yeah. No, it is because um, we only fit three iterations of four seconds into our 10 seconds here. This is why we have to use repeat three. 12. Um, we have 12 because we uh, we force the time to a jump. Because we force the time to jump by four seconds. Because it doesn't know smaller increments, right? So it's doing the last, look, it's doing the last round in our loop with the time of 12. It doesn't have a way to uh, do it in the middle because we are forcing these four second jumps. No, I don't think that's a bug. I think the reason is that we jump four seconds and our loop doesn't have a way to leave at 10 seconds because at 10 seconds there is no no iteration. I don't think that's a bug. It's a bug in the timer. Ah, okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. But we already catch this bug in our other test here. This would already catch it, I think. But I want to write this test properly with a proper name because right now it doesn't have one. So let's say, let's call it start timer. Um, how would I call it start timer? Additional time passed. Start timer over duration, right? start timer over duration or start timer man over duration returns correct tick count do you agree with this naming start timer over duration returns correct tick count This is what we are testing, right? But we can't fix this today, I have to go now. So this would be a nice way to uh, pick up tomorrow. Right? Because I only have 10 minutes left and that's too, I, I still have to wrap up everything. So I have to go now. Um, but Gabo, do you like this naming for the test? Start timer over duration returns correct tick count. And we want to test that when we skip a few seconds to find the future, we get the wrong tick count. Fix this test. So this is what we are going to do tomorrow. I hope that's fine for everyone, but I really have to uh, prepare now for the appointment. But Gabo, again, thank you very much for picking this up. This is something I would have missed as well. And I'm so happy that we made progress on the countdown on the timer test. I'm really happy. I was really frustrated with being that stuck. Yes, I think that's, well, Google has uh, live data um, 
test util for that, which seems to work. Get or await value. Get or await value. Just want to show him the link. The get or await. This is also something I haven't understood yet, why we have to uh, use this unconfined. No, it was the other way around, right? The enough actions broke when we used singletop and they worked without singletop. That's what he was getting at. That's what my question was about. Let's see. Look, at the moment there is no singletop in here, only this one in the navigation call. But this is not what we mean, right? We mean the one in in the manifest. So at the moment we don't have that. Let's see if I, I don't remember. No. Or what? No, it was the deep link that we cared about, right? The deep link. Let's see. No, it works. It works without single top. And it stopped working with single top. Because if it would work with single top, then I would be very happy because single top is what I wanted to begin with. Or do you mean something else? I'm talking about the, navig uh, the notification pending intent. This one works without single top. Yeah, it should be default. Yeah, there's no launch mode in here right now. Yeah, but if it would have worked with single top, then I would never had complained about anything because this is the combination I originally wanted. I wanted single top and the action to work, but I actually had to remove single top. Kaiser, thank you for following. Who was debugging that? Ah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I think it was single top that broke it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was single top that broke it. Look, I'm here, clicking the notification, and I can switch. It was single top that broke it. So let's just be happy without single top. And I'm so happy that we we'll make progress on the tests. You can't imagine what a relief that is. Anyway, tomorrow I will try to write a test that you came up with. Again, again, thank you for that. I wouldn't have noticed that. So again, what do you think about this naming convention here or the name of the method? Start timer over duration returns correct tick count. This is what we want to avoid, right? When we skip time, we don't want to get too many ticks. But are the additional ticks even a problem? I don't know. I can't think about this tomorrow. Weren't there multiple instances of the same activity launch? Yeah. This, this is what happens, yes. But I actually want this as well. 
because I don't want the user to uh, um, lose the input on the edit screen because he clicked the timer. I want to I want this to be on the back stack, but I think it actually isn't after the after the deep link. I think the deep link actually uh, I think the deep, the deep link actually does not create another instance. Yeah, Gabo, this is what I created this new test for. But we, are, we will finish writing this tomorrow. I really have to uh, go now, but we will raid someone again. Is any one of you interested in Flutter? Anyone here interested in Flutter? Because we should raid her. She did it for me a few times. So uh, check her out, definitely. Wait, you don't like Flutter or what are you talking about? Yeah. I think it's interesting. No, the, the finger will not be fixed today. I will just try to get some input and recommendation what I should do. The, the breaking the finger will be a big surgery. They actually have to, uh, they have to uh, numb my arm and then they have to cut it open and break the bone, I guess. I guess they, they use a saw for that. I assume, but I have to do it because this finger doesn't work properly. It's hurting all the time when I move it. It's stiff. It's really a bad feeling. Yeah, she's also from Germany, and he she did my uh, she did the first raid on my channel, and another one today. So I'm gonna finish the stream for now. Thank you everyone for helping. Thank you for pointing out all these things. I'm happy that we made progress on the on the test. I feel much better now. So I will finish the stream unless someone has to say anything. And then I will move you guys over. Yeah, Violax Sirpinik. Thank you for following me on TikTok as well. I just realized that. And it seems like Viola is your first name and Sirpinik your last name. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why this worked is because of you guys. Alone, I would still be stuck with the same problems. It's so difficult to figure this out alone, but together it's it's working better. Yeah. And I will, I will push the changes tomorrow after we have finished te writing the test for this, for this uh, countdown timer. Yeah. Thank you guys. Tomorrow, same time if you want. All right, see ya.